The Imagination Playground has always been a place for fun-filled activities to offer young children to give them a productive foundation in the Brooklyn community. Today, Prospect Lefferts Gardens Arts has sponsored a couple of workshops from arts and crafts to theater arts to heighten our children's imagination and give them a sense of respect for the arts. PLG Arts also pays tribute to Mr. Neal's famous sculpture called Peter and Willie based on the work of Mr. Jack Keats. I've often heard of Mr. O'Neill's uh, various pieces uh, throughout the city. He lives in my district, he's a resident of my district. So it's a pleasure to see him here in the Imagination Playground where children could look at his art, use their imagination not only to see what the art represents, but to see where they go. I think so many things restrict the imagination of our children. Everything is readily available and is instantaneous. When you see a beautiful piece of work here and it's very in this artistry, it also invokes a level of imagination in the children. So this imagination playground becomes a place where dreams can grow, where you can allow your imagination to flourish if it's looking at a play or looking at this very beautiful piece that he has uh, contributed to this um, playground. As Brooklyn is evolving, it's changing and it's growing and it's full of life and with that is coming a whole group of different artists. Our many artists are finding uh, Brooklyn to be their home. This is from Dumbo or Prospect Heights. Uh, not, what I would love to do is ensure that we create space where they can do that, where there, there are different uh, pieces and a different uh, presentations can be displayed. Not only does it allow us to enjoy the beauty, beauty of art, but it also allows us to do something that's even more important, understand that we need to celebrate our diversity, and our diversity can be expressed through art, and we can learn from each other through art, and that's my goal. Thank you. Thank you. Second piece that you have here at the Brooklyn Children's Center? Well, uh, this is a, a, a print from a charcoal uh, drawing that I made back in 1980 mm -hmm. uh, the, about Dr. King. I call it, I've been to the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, there's a rendering of uh, what appears to be mountains in the background. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, you know, Dr. King speaks for himself, you know. Is there a reason why you chose um, Dr. King? For this well, I mean, uh, he's one of my uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. I had the good fortune to uh, see him down in Washington, 1963, during his uh, wonderful speech. And, uh, you know, he's an inspiration, you know, to me and many, many other people. Uh, uh, just a uh, small number of galleries, really. Uh, the most important, I think, me was Dorsey's gallery, which is located right in Brooklyn. It was through Dorsey's that I sold an awful lot of work. Uh, Dorsey himself had collected uh, uh, quite a, a bit of my work, and including maybe about 10 uh, pieces of sculpture, uh, some of which, you know, uh, I have to mention that uh, uh, Lawrence Dorsey passed away about a year ago, and um, uh, some of his uh, works from his collection have been sold at the auction at the Swan Gallery, uh, some of uh, which were mine. And uh, one of uh, Dorsey, uh, one of his pieces uh, went for about $106,000. That was a piece that he owned by Buford Delaney. But uh, he had uh, works by a lot of major artists. Uh, Jacob Lawrence, Ernie Critchlow, Tom Feelings, uh, Charles White, uh, Elizabeth Catlett, uh, Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph Delaney, Buford Delaney, um, and a uh, number of other artists uh, in his collection. And uh, so I consider, you know, Dorsey, even though it was a small place, I consider it major. But I, I've also, you know, shown in uh, uh, 
uh, Ken Kellerman Gallery, um, uh, uh, Sinke Gallery here, and uh, a few museums I've shown at uh, the Columbia Museum in South Carolina. Uh, I've shown at the Brooklyn Museum, uh, the African Museum in Hempstead. Many people tend to consider the look of something rather than its complete value. In the case of this art gallery, its value is rich in history. For over 30 years, Dorsey's Gallery has premiered work by some of Black America's most celebrated artists, including George Wilson, Jacob Lawrence, Ernie Critchlow, Tom Feelings, James Denmark, and Otto Niels. To this day, Dorsey's Gallery remains a place for new and veteran artists to show their work and help leave a respectable mark in the art world. This one particular day, I opened the door, walked in the house, and immediately I saw what had to be done with that piece of wood. And the idea for the crocodile uh, was formed then. I carved that piece of wood into the crocodile. And at a later date, I decided to have a mold made, and uh, the piece was cast and made into a bronze. And I just merely call it a crocodile. The walking stick. Mm -hmm. but, it is all, it's a walking stick, but it's also a percussion instrument. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. and, and you can... Uh, are, did you put ivory in some of the um, some parts of the stick? It's uh, mother pearl. Oh, mother pearl, mother pearl. Mother pearl, grass, okay. uh, and bells. Oh, okay. Okay. How many bells are inside? It's probably about a half a dozen. Oh, okay. Uh, this wood is uh, is ebony. Mm -hmm. and I first uh, during my one of my first trips to Africa, I was in this village, and this brother said he could uh, get me some ebony, and I said fine. And uh, so I came back home, and over the years we uh, made uh, in communicated. And 14 years later, I went back to uh, Ghana, and I went to the village where I uh, stayed. And uh, the brother there said, "I have your, your wood for you, you know." So I told him, "Well, uh, I, I'm still traveling, and I can't carry uh, 150 pounds of wood with me." So uh, we'll have to uh, arrange something. So I came back home, and years pass. I think about another four years pass, and I got a call from KLM Cargo, and they said, uh, "Well, we have a package here for you." So I, I, I forgot, had forgotten about this. And anyhow, I went out to K, uh, Kennedy and discovered that uh, there were three pieces of wood uh, there for me. The only thing we shared with each other, we were just discussing a little while ago about the landmark status of this building in honor of Mr. Dorsey and how we could get the community you know, involved uh, to secure this venture. Mm -hmm. Originally it was just framing, but then he got into the idea of putting up uh, artwork. I think initially he put up his own artwork. Uh, he had a pretty extensive um, a personal collection of uh, well-known uh, artists. Mm -hmm. And I might mention that the Swan Gallery had an auction of uh, some of Dawson's collection just uh, a short while ago. Uh, some of the pieces by Buford yeah, Delaney, we, we Elizabeth Catlett, Hugh right. Smith, uh, Ernie Critchlow, Tom Feelings, and a number of other uh, well-known yeah. artists. More than half of those by Mr. Dawson sold.
I, I, it's hard to say. Like, I have to say that I'm self-taught in the areas of, uh, you know, I, except in the area of uh, printmaking. I studied at the Bob Blackman Printmaking Workshop for that. But in all the other areas, you know, watercolors, pastels, uh, oils, uh, wood, stone, uh, uh, you know, all of those areas, I, I've taught myself through the aid of books and, uh, and just observing other artists. And, uh, you know, that, I guess that's where the influence comes in. I used to uh, observe some of the things that John Roden was doing and I, uh, when the when he was carving, and I would try to, you know, I'd study that and and teach myself. I didn't have any direct teachers uh, in those areas. The uh, imagery shows uh, the hands, the helping hands of the hospital and, and the medical establishment, and a, a family group within those hands being supported by these hands. On uh, each side of the mural, I have a circular uh, grouping of people. Uh, different people that might use the ser services in the hospital. You know, you know uh, uh, blacks, Asians, whites, and, and so on. Different cultures. Thank you. Thank you. Overjoyed to see something so colorful and full of life and optimism and, you know, on the premises. Uh, I was struck by, you know, the spirit of helpfulness and wanting to open, uh, you know, be open-handed with people and, and of course, with family and children, you know, the, the community. Like, I just got a very strong sense of all of the colors in our community coming together to pull together. And this, to me, this is what that says to me. You know. At Mr. Neal's home, I managed to get a closer look at a collection of artwork he's created over the years. Like all of his pieces, they depict African culture through a range of mediums, from drawing, painting, sculpturing, stone carving, wood carving, etching, and printmaking. For years, I have studied under many teachers to improve my skills in drawing portraits. A few short lessons from Mr. Neal's became more gainful than years spent in the classroom. In return for his teachings, I presented him with a piece for his own personal collection. If you are an aspiring artist looking for direction or some degree of discipline in your craft, you can learn from Otto Neal's, one of America's last surviving elder of the arts. Well, I just uh, say that, you know, they should keep focus and uh, try to produce, you know, things that works that are positive, meaningful, you know, to themselves and to, you know, people that, uh, that are around them. Uh, you know, I, I, I think uh, if, if they stay focused and do the things that they like to do and, and try to reach out and touch people with their art, I think it would be a good thing.